Uh, good morning, everybody. My name is Deborah Byrne from Deborah Byrne Psychology Services, known across social media as DB Psychology, and welcome to this week's Facebook Live. Um, and this week it's all about um, our blog um, about avoidant personality disorder. And as I said before, I do these blogs um, because somebody out there may need the information and they are basic. It, they're just a form of basic information, but they're also a great way to raise awareness of different mental health problems and uh, to give you the correct information that you can use and form your own opinion. Um, so avoidant personality disorder is basically uh, part of what, what is classed as uh, cluster C pers uh, personality disorders. Um, personality disorders are grouped or clustered into different uh, categories based around um, you know, the type as closely as the type that they are together. So in this case, I'm going to get a bit waffly here now at the moment. So in this case, it's cluster C or group C and it's based around anxiety. So these are anxiety based disorders. So it would be avoidant personality would be in with um, OCD and dependent personality disorder. Um, and they are as I said, very much based around anxiety um, um, avoidant personality. You might think when you, you start to hear some of the symptoms that um, avoidant personality is very similar to social anxiety disorder. Very, very, very similar, a lot of similar characteristics, but avoidant personality disorder is a more severe form of social anxiety. OK, it's much more severe. Um, so you have to be aware of that and much more debilitating. Now, um, it is, of course, fear based um, social anxiety based. It has, uh, you know, your the person involved would have people pleasing um, very much, very poor self-esteem. Um, they will avoid social situations to be very, very uncomfortable. And so, so sorry, tripping over my tongue this morning. Social situations, very un, uh, uncomfortable with that. Um, we reckon it's about two and a half percent of the population has this disorder. Um, and it, it isn't diagnosed until somebody is over 18. That's the pretty much normal for uh, conditions not to be diagnosed until somebody is an adult. But this is something that starts in infancy, in childhood. Um, and there's a whole range of symptoms, which I have listed out in the blog. There's also a whole range of causes which I've and and how to diagnose. I've listed those out in the blog, the diagnosis, um, and I'm not going to go into them today. I want to focus on um, more on the person and treatment and how if you're supporting somebody like this, how you can um, help yourself. So the list of symptoms are quite long. And as I said, uh, I've listed some of the main ones above. Um, so do check them out in the blog at www.deborahburnpsychologyservices.com. Um, the cause, the cause is, as we always say, unknown. And the reason we always say every time I come on, I'll say, well, the cause is unknown. The cause is unknown because the mind, um, the brain and how it works, although, you know, things have improved a lot and technology has helped us a lot. We still don't know. We still don't really know exactly parts of the brain operating together what forms what and what does that we have rough ideas and very rough ideas but we can't pin it down to an exact area you know sometimes we just cannot do that so they always this is why they always say cause unknown in saying that we do know it runs in families we do know um you know that there could be um a possible genetic uh, effect there we do know that it comes you know from um abuse from neglect in childhood um or by a rejection by peers in school by being rejected so we have to think you know some of the times it can be a case that the child has another condition and because of that they are rejected by their peers um or they're you know for some reason they're neglected um, or abused or whatever and something happens or something happens in their childhood or maybe their personality to start with was very shy 
And because of other factors that build in throughout their childhood and through maybe in their teen years, they then then develop um, avoidant personality disorder. So you can see why we have to wait until, you know, you get until you get to your adulthood before something is diagnosed. A lot of things won't kick in until uh, teen years and um, it's, a, you know, it can be some disorders are a combination of um, a number of factors piling one on top of the other. Uh, and it's like a ripple effect and it causes a condition. And in this case, it can cause a condition um, known as avoidant personality disorder. Um, as I said, the diagnosis, um, it, I've listed how that's done. Treatment. With treatment, um, as you can, as I've just said, you know, why the causes can be. The causes then lead us out to treatment, to diagnosis and then treatment. With somebody with avoidant personality disorder, they're going to have very deep rooted thinking. They're going to have very deep rooted behaviours. And these need to be uncovered and the treatment needs to be very tailored, usually around um, psychotherapy, um, probably you combining in then uh, CBT, if that's what's needed, probably will be needed. Maybe other other, um, you know, t techniques and other uh, forms of therapy can be added in. But we need to unearth what they're how they're thinking, how these people are thinking, why they're thinking like that. What was the original cause of it? Um, and to help them, the whole idea is to help them back to integrate back into society. Um, usually by the time somebody's diagnosed with something like this, they have withdrawn. Uh, they have very severe social anxiety. They have withdrawn from society and it is affecting their everyday life. It isn't something that um, they can just snap out of or get better. They need help. They need to um, they need quite a lengthy period of therapy before they will interact again with society um, and, um, you know, c can go to work, maybe go to college, maybe go, you know, go back to school, whatever they want to go back to and do or whatever stage they're at in their life. Um, so it's it's very, very debilitating, this condition, much more so than social anxiety. Um, so the other part then is with this, there are complications, of course. Um, some people resort to uh, substance abuse um, and that would need to be treated. Um, you would have depression, as I said, there'd be anxiety. So another form of treatment will be to treat the anxiety and the depression. And if there is any substance abuse, to treat that. So we could have medication. We could need an anti-anxiety tablet um, to help. To help the condition along, eventually, of course, the whole idea would be to wean somebody off medication altogether and that they would be fully integrated and, and uh, coping in society. Again, and coping in their daily life, and I mean by coping in society, it is to have a life. That's the whole idea, is to nurture them and to then allow them to spread their wings and to, um, you know, have the life that they want and they deserve. Um with this as well, of course, if you are supporting somebody with um, any sort of personality disorder or any sort of mental health um, at all, you need to support yourself. So if you are a family member or if you are in a relationship with somebody, then, of course, you know, family therapy, again, would probably be very important in this case, because with somebody like this, it is very, very important they have family support. But it can be exhausting it can be exhausting for the person involved um with any any condition that you are trying to support a loved one with it is tiring um you know it can be frustrating it's very stressful you know sometimes the onus is on you to take care of them and to do all the financial you know be the, the financial breadwinner and things like that you can be under an awful lot of pressure so you need support yourself and i would urge you to get that to get your own therapy and to um, set boundaries, you have to set boundaries with somebody like this that you will, you know, yes, we can continue like this, but you must get therapy. Yes, you must go into treatment. Um, and that's a very fine line. So a therapist, your own therapist will help you set those boundaries um, and establish your own 
sense of self-care and your own trust again in yourself. And that is all very important when you are supporting somebody uh, with with this condition. Um, and that's about it f- uh, for this week. Um, if you check it out, it's at services. And as I said, these types of blogs are about raising awareness about mental health and raising, a, uh, you know, educating you to empower you. So do check it out. Um, Monday, as far as I know, it the blog is going to be on um, a severe form of PMS. So any women out there might want to actually check it out because this form uh, does affect your mental health. Um, it's quite debilitating for your life. And um, and that's coming out on Monday, as far as I know. I'm, I've, I've written several blogs ahead, but if it's not out this Monday, it's definitely out next Monday. Um, as far as I know, it is. And, and then I'll be talking about dementia the following week. Um, so do check that out on Monday. And as always, good morning, Deirdre. Good morning, Colette and Kim and Jennifer and to everybody else who tunes in every week to uh, listen to my ramblings. And I will say good morning for this week and um, I'll see you all next Saturday. Thank you.